after a week of diss tracks and back and forths and all of the kind of stuff that happened with the Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef. Beef continues between Michigan and Ohio State. Uh, we're going to get to last week where Gene Smith decided to open his mouth about Michigan football. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Michigan uh, had its little, uh, like we talked about last week, had its little moment using the, uh, the Kendrick Lamar Drake beef. But let's talk a little bit about the toxicity, not only of the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry, but also of the, uh, of the Michigan-Michigan State rivalry. On this episode of Lockdown Wolverines... You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday. We are back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire 3 USA Today Sports Media Group. And in case you're living under a rock, uh, last week, Thursday, I believe it was, maybe Friday, one of those two days, uh, Gene Smith, the outgoing athletic director of the Ohio State University uh, was asked on a local uh, Columbus, Ohio radio station, WOSU, aptly named, uh, do you think that Michigan deserves an asterisk for the last three wins over uh, the Buckeyes? And uh, Gene Smith went on and said, yes, I do. And talked about the integrity of the game, the sanctity of the game. Uh, it, it just feels very, uh, I just, I just rewatched the movie Kingpin the other day. It feels very Ernie McCracken for someone at Ohio state, the higher up talking about the integrity of the game. Now, uh, I won't go into like the full comments of what he had to say. We're not going to look that up and read it. And I mean, it's been out there for a few days, but I do feel like we do need to talk about it. Right. It is it, the, the incessant whining out of Columbus continues to be absolutely absurd. Now, again, it, if you followed this show all through October, then you know exactly kind of what happened, right? We've talked about that. Um, I, I feel like I'm, I can probably say that there are very few people that know more about all of the, quote, improprieties that the Connor Stallion saga, uh, what that ended up producing and all of that. There's fewer people that know more about that than I do. Okay. So I can understand if someone is ignorantly wanting to jump to the worst case scenario, the worst conclusion, they jump, got their jump to conclusions, Matt, and decided this is an absolute atrocity what Michigan was doing. And it gave this like huge benefit. I mean, again, we know that the NCAA had a committee who before all of this even broke said that it was of minimal benefit to do what Connor was doing. Uh, again, it was a one man show. Uh, not overly, but I mean, one man show in, in sense of there was no one above Connor that was overseeing the whole thing. Now we're not going to relitigate that whole thing. We've, we've done plenty of shows about it, but I can understand if someone who is uninformed or just is wishing for the worst possible thing, like this idea that Michigan knew every play and therefore they were able to do it. Like if that was the case, like it would be a touchdown on every play, uh, offensively and, a stop on every play because you would know exactly, you know, you could overload like, oh, they're going to hit the A gap or whatever. And I know that's not how football works, but I'm just saying in the, the minds of these people, they'd be like, oh, they knew that they were going to hit the A gap. They knew it was going to be a sweep to the left side or whatever. Well, then you could just have your entire defense go and stop it. It would there, there'd be no first downs. It's absurd, but I digress to some degree. The thing is, is who it's coming from, right? Because when, it, when it's coming from a rival, it's the sourest of sour grapes. And that has been the case in Columbus for some time. Now, in a weird way, it's not terribly different than how Michigan fans treated the Michigan State rivalry post Lloyd Carr. I say that as someone who was a Michigan fan, you know, before I worked in the media. So you're looking 2008 through 2014, the height of my fandom was post-college. Uh, I graduated uh, following Lloyd Carr's last year, uh, but certainly, you know, th there was always that kind of bravado, right? Like we're Michigan, we've got the better roster, and that's kind of what it all boils down to. Uh, we talked about this about a month and a half ago or so. Uh, I can't remember who's, I, I wish I could give credit to this person, 
but I don't I don't remember uh, their Twitter handle. But like they had said, like when you start to understand that Ohio State is an off season program, that they are that they are more about celebrating recruiting wins, off season victories, all of that stuff. Then you kind of come to understand their ethos. To some degree, that's what Michigan was uh, a little bit in the uh, in in the Mark D'Antonio era for Michigan State was a uh, was a program that was celebrating like look at the recruits we've got now we should be able to do it right even getting Jim Harbaugh now we should be able to do it the thing with Ohio State is is they can't see past their nose that that's exactly who they are that's a hundred percent who they are and that's why you see the incessant whining that's why every single day basically you go on Twitter you go to message board geniuses which is a fun account wasn't fun October November. <laughs> but it's back to mostly being fun. And because they, what they're doing is highlighting the lunacy on the message boards and the lunacy. It's like almost every day you get something from buck nuts or Letterman row or, you know, something you've got, uh, independence. I, I, I guess entities. It's not a news outlet, but you have Kirk Barton over at Buckeye scoop who I know people told me don't even mention him. I'm going to just because it's, he's absolutely absurd. Okay, having their fever dream on a daily basis and it just melting down. It's like every single day it's memento. Like they wake up and they look and they see Michigan won the national championship and they're learning all of it for the first time. And then they melt down with the same weirdness again and again and again. And, not, and it, you can tell that this is kind of the directive of the athletic department because you have Gene Smith outwardly saying it. And that if you are, uh, I, I know Buckeye fans are going to be against this, but again, I, I know more than you do about all of this stuff as far as what happened at Michigan. If you are concerned about sportsmanship, you need to just let it go and focus on the, the, the actual game itself. Because guess what? Connor Stallions was not out on the sidelines at Michigan Stadium last year in November. Had nothing to do with the team at that point. Was weeks removed, more than a month removed from the team at that point. Or a month-ish removed or whatever. Yeah, Jim Harbaugh wasn't even on the sidelines. He was both at home and then at the hospital visiting Zach Zinter. And yet you still lost. And yet you sit there and say, well, we were close. Okay, but you weren't supposed to be close. All of the crowing going into that week was how... Kyle McCord was finally the right guy to get it done, and then you ran him out of town when he didn't. Kyle McCord might be better than you think he is. He wasn't what you said he was beforehand, before that game, but he's not as bad as you act like he was. The problem is, is not the last three years when it comes to Connor Stallions, who, by the way, was an intern in 2021, was not officially on Michigan staff until 2022. And as much as you want to say, well, why was Donovan Edwards able to rip off those long runs? Well, it's because you idiots <laughs> decided that you were you couldn't you couldn't load up this uh, you just couldn't do what you were doing beforehand, right? Because Michigan was just gashing you offensively, and then you left the whole side of the line open. It wasn't because Michigan was cheating; it's because you got worn down and you didn't have guys in the right position. It happens. And you know what? When it comes to a lot of the sign stealing stuff, you actually don't hear Michigan crying about Ryan Day's first two years at Ohio State as an offensive coordinator and as a head coach. Something we have highlighted since 2020 on this show that they were that they had Michigan signs, perhaps even beyond what was just feasible. Okay, we've talked about that for four years, but. What was what were we saying that whole time? It wasn't Ohio State. Something needs to happen in Ohio State. No, it was Michigan. You got to get smarter. You got to get better. So that's what they went out and did. They got more physical. Let's talk about the physicality. Let's talk about all that stuff. And then we'll talk also about Michigan State and some ridiculousness that is happening with that rivalry as well. Because I'm not leaving you all alone either. We're going to get into all of that. And we're going to do so here in just a moment. Before we do... When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you've got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is the tools to help uh, help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And now here's the cool the cool thing about LinkedIn Jobs. It's not just a job board. 
LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might actually be open for that perfect role. You can be a little bit of a sniper in there. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours a day. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Now, here's the other really cool thing. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier, more intuitive, faster. They even have uh, a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process that much better. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I'll tell you what, uh, I agree with a lot of the Michigan fans I see on Twitter who are calling it the best off season ever. It's funny because actually I kind of feel like, again, um, I, I'm not the, I know a lot of people don't believe me. I'm wearing a Michigan shirt right now. I, I did actually want to mention this. I wear this for a reason. This is uh, one of Wolverine, uh, their new shirts that you can get uh, in a conjunction with Valiant. So you can go to Wolverine.com and uh, pick one of these up uh, again, super amazing, high quality. And uh, for someone who currently is uh, coated in poison ivy, it's a very comfortable shirt to wear uh, while uh, dealing with a skin affliction. It's uh, it's a very, uh, very nice uh, shirt. But anyway, uh, yes, I'm wearing a Rose Bowl hat. If you're listening and not watching Rose Bowl hat, Michigan shirt. Uh, but uh, this is uh, the comfort of the day. And um, the uh i don't really i when michigan lost in 2020 it was kind of like okay <laughs> like that is what it is now i'm not the highs of of it all were very high still right like it's hard to not be romantic about it when michigan you know completes the climb as we talked about for a, a lot over the last couple of years before they actually won the national championship uh and winning the rose bowl in particular against alabama Sending Nick Saban to retirement, it's it's tough to not find that a bit romantic. Uh, so, but that said, like, if Ohio State was to win the national championship, if they're to beat Michigan and win the national championship, certainly there are going to be a lot of people that come after me because they think they're going to hurt my feelings or something. Uh, honestly, the only thing I want is you just leave me alone. <laughs> I, that's the only thing. Like, it... it if, if they win, there will be no part of me that's going to have the same type of reaction as a fan would, right? Like, it's just, unfortunately, what happens when you're in the business for a while is uh, you kind of lose that a little bit. Uh, but uh, that said, I, that's why I feel like the necessity to come on here and say, like, Ohio State fans, you are out of your minds, out of your minds. Now, not all of you. There's a lot of you that are absolutely wonderful. Uh, again, I have Ohio State fans in my family. My entire dad's side of the family, the entire dad's side of the family, my dad is the only one who is not, are Ohio State fans. Uh, so, I mean, I've been hearing it for my whole life uh, about uh, OH, blah, blah, blah. But uh, the fact that you cannot come to grips with the reality of the situation and that is just excuse after excuse after excuse piling up instead of just taking your medicine and understanding what you absolutely need to do to beat Michigan, which it does not seem that Ryan Day has even figured out that lesson. Because if I'm Ryan Day, and now he's gotten some good recruiting wins here and there, uh, lost some too, right? Like he got Justin Scott and then lost Justin Scott. Like a player like that is the type you need, right? Because Michigan is prided itself on being more physical from the inside out. Ohio State has done, it's done a little bit to fix that, but very little to actually fix that, right? Going and getting the one player that you, like, I, I would beg Michigan fans to, to search your heart at this moment. Ask yourself, how many opposing offensive players, or not offensive players, but offensive linemen, can I name off the top of my head that Michigan played, well, that I can sit there and say, that offensive lineman had a bad game against Michigan. How many can you name? Chances are it's one of one. <laughs> it's, 
It's the guy from Alabama, Seth McLaughlin, that Ohio State went out and got. So it fits the brand, essentially. Um, but it's, uh, to me, it, it, it's just hilarious that it continues to, to be a thing. But I, I get that a lot of Michigan fans enjoy the schadenfreude of seeing the meltdown. I just want peace personally. So the, the fact that I continue to do shows about this is, which makes my life less peaceful, tells you how, how much I feel in this moment. It's like, okay, it's time to stand up. So, uh, nonetheless, it, it's having the opposing athletic director in the rivalry, essentially feeding red meat to the fan base instead of calming things down. In a weird way, is a very Mark D'Antonio type move. And now here's the thing for Gene Smith. He's, he's Magic Johnson in this. <laughs> he ain't going to be here. He's gone in like a month. So it, it makes no difference to him what he says at this point. But he's raising the temperature on a fan, a fan base that is getting increasingly more toxic when it comes to this because they believe, A, that they won all the offseason championships. You see that happening this year in particular. Look at the transfers we got. They've gotten some good transfers. They still haven't gotten some of the ones that I would have, again, I would have looked at almost exclusively defensive line, offensive line, probably a quarterback that's more amenable to the system than Will Howard is. You know, they, they, they did a lot of change for the sake of change, uh, but not necessarily ones that necessarily match up with Michigan per se. It's, it's an inability to address the root issues. Because when you say, oh, they, the reason why we lost the last three years is due to the fact that Michigan was doing something wrong, well, you can just watch the game. And if you know anything about football, then you understand that that's not true. All it is is you got overpowered for the most part. But the cold and the snow and the flu and five plays and, you know, 364 days and what we did in the dark is going to come to light and yada, yada, yada. At, at some point, you just got to take your lumps and understand that what we're doing isn't working. It's like me with my diet, <laughs> okay? What I'm doing is not working, clearly. I might be doing all the right things, staying under a calorie deficit, uh, eating mostly the right foods, but what I'm doing is clearly not working, because I have not lost any weight despite exercise and diet. Therefore, I need to change. Ohio State, that is a, what we call a metaphor. So you need to figure it out and stop complaining. Or, as I think a lot of Michigan fans would have, just keep complaining. Whatever. It's fine. Let's get to the Michigan State of it all because there's two items uh, as far as that rivalry is concerned that has been also hilarious and ridiculous that has happened over the last couple of days. So we're going to get to the Michigan State items because we're not leaving you alone here in just a moment. Before we do, it's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. So pick a ringer with $5, get $150 to play with. It's $150 to bet on spreads. Money lines, player props, and a heck of a lot more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, like I said, there's been two things that I've, I've found absurd uh, coming out of the Michigan State camp. Uh, the The... the I feel like right now, Michigan State fans to Michigan fans are kind of gnats, right? Like it's it's been two two years of winning, three straight college football playoffs. You know, inconsequential loss to Michigan State in twenty twenty one in the grand scheme. Uh, they were very loud after twenty twenty one with lots of oh, they would rather beat us than Ohio State, which is the most insane thing I've ever heard. Uh, but. Uh, Nonetheless, the, the cope has been hard, but they've been mostly quiet. And, uh, but it's kind of the, the quiet kind of stopped with Donovan Edwards being pictured on the deluxe edition of the NCAA college football game coming out. 
EA, sorry, EA Sports College Football 2025 or 25 or whatever it's called. I mean, it's come from Ohio State too, obviously. Like a lot of like Ohio State fans have been up in arms about it, right? Because they want, I don't know, Denzel Burke to be on it. I that they think that uh, the better option for them for that to to be front and centered would, would be Seth McLaughlin himself. No, I don't know. <laughs> Quinchon Judkins is on there, uh, but uh, lots of revisionist history. What has Donovan Edwards done? And it's kind of fine in some, well, not fine, but Ohio State fans say it as if he didn't have the two super long touchdowns against them and then the two in the national championship game. He is a brand name in college football, regardless of what people want to say about it, right? He had all the hype going into last year. To act like no one knew who he was before this is absurd. I mean, PFF did a whole podcast with him, right? Like Donovan Edwards is well known. Uh, But to me, the funnier part is seeing the likes of the Michigan State fan base trying to advocate for Kenneth Walker for some reason here. Like, you you do know Kenneth Walker has not been in college football for a couple years. What Do we want to bring Jeff Smoker back and put him on the cover? Is that what we're we're looking for? Matt Trannon to grace the the new video game, right? Like, get the hip name with a hip game. Like, what are we doing here? And the funny part is, is some of the arguments I've seen about it are like extrapolating the stats, right? Like, oh, Donovan in three years has done the the same thing that Kenneth Walker did in uh in uh, three months, while also noting that they have the same amount of carries. Because I, mean, I don't know if you know this, Michigan State fans, but Blake Corum has been the starter, but Donovan Edwards is now going to be the starter. So it makes sense as the next face of a run-first football team that just won the national championship and also had uh, two highlight reel touchdowns to basically win the thing for Michigan. Yeah, it makes sense that he would be on the cover, okay? So that's number one, but it's some of the cope has just been absolutely phenomenal and unbelievable, but like also very believable. The other part has been the uh, the backlash of, uh, I believe it's Jaden Mangum. I always get Jaden and Jaren mixed up. Uh, one of the Mangum brothers who was at uh, the one from Gro- Birmingham Groves, uh, plays on the defensive side of the ball, who uh, visited Michigan, and it does seem like he's maybe Michigan's to lose. I say that now before he commits sight unseen somewhere else because that's kind of the trajectory we've seen for every transfer portal person recently. Uh, <laughs> he uh, just the complete meltdown compared to Samaj Bridgman visiting uh, East Lansing, and it's, it's kind of humorous to see like the comment sections of these things. I was honestly a little surprised to see just like the go be great fam type comments on Samaj Bridgman, right? Typically, you know, no fan of one side of a rival likes it if another one even visits the other, right? These aren't commitments. These are visits. But uh, maybe that tells you how much of the teeth has been taken out of the Michigan-Michigan state rivalry, right? They, they whine, and yet Michigan fans can say, 49 nothing and it shouldn't have it wasn't even that close like you're not even in the same ballpark at the moment right but uh the mixture of all of it which has also led to the eldest uh, mangum brother uh talking his doing his stuff right he's out there doing his stuff talking uh, smack on msu after the treatment of both brothers leaving it, it's it's made for a nice little cocktail for rival fans so Enjoy the schadenfreude if that is your thing. Again, I prefer to live in peace. My, my, my ideal would be like, you know, win or lose, you shake a hand and, and well, I'll get you next time, right? Like that's, that's just kind of how I grew up. Going to Christian schools and everything, like you poke fun at rivals, you, you do different things that maybe get under their skin a little bit, but it's all in good fun, right? That's how it should be. But then people take things way too seriously and then it becomes, uh, you become the most charm and soft program in the United States of America, like Ohio State is. Take your lumps, Ohio State. Take your lumps, Michigan State. Just deal with it. Just like Michigan had to deal with it for decades of first mediocrity in the 2000s for the most part, and then abject horror 
from 2008 through 2014, and even with the Ohio State and Michigan State rivalries extending into the Jim Harbaugh era, right? Michigan fans kind of learned what it was like to kind of just grit and bear it. And it does not feel like either of your fan bases, for some understand any reason, can come to any understanding, right? When Ohio State won the national championship in 2014, this the couple months before I started working in earnest in the media, I was like, darn. But by halftime, I had come to grips with it. And you're like, it is what it is. And yet, like I said, these other fan bases wake up every morning like Memento. And it's like they learn all over again. And they just cannot come to terms. So uh, seek some help. That's all I got to say. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Tomorrow, uh, one thing I know, do you know we're going to talk about is a transfer portal because Michigan has lost CJ West. Michigan has lost uh, Terrence Brooks. Michigan uh, was highly targeting a Purdue five star uh, cornerback and he reclassifies and stays with Purdue. Got to get into it. So we will do that tomorrow, uh, amongst other things. So thanks for watching. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you again soon. Peace.